peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Therefore, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, that I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And especially to this beloved family, the family of Miss, I call her Miss B, Miss Beatrice Porter. We thank you for being here today. And as we come on this occasion, I know it's a sad occasion and a somber occasion. But if I can see Miss B now, I know she's ready for a celebration. Amen. So let us celebrate her life in her honor this day. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for this time and we ask, oh God, as we open this service, that you will not only be with us, but be in every nook and cranny of this place. Be with this family, oh God, like never before. And so as we come to you, we come to you now with sincerity of heart, with heaviness on our hearts, seeking you for guidance, for peace, and most of all, dear God, we seek you, hallelujah, for that blessed day when we too will have the hope that Miss Beatrice Jones Porter has now received. In Jesus' name. said today we are celebrating life and we celebrate life together and in support of this family okay. and as we do there are programs that we will the family has so graciously provided and we're going to follow their program as closely as possible as written so therefore, I ask Reverend Andre Jones Sr. to come for scripture. Before I go any further, are there any other ministers in the house? Then I will do prayer, and then we will have a congregational selection. There's not a friend mm -hmm. like the lowly Jesus, mm -hmm. which I understand was Miss B's favorite him. I know for many of us, today is a sad occasion. But for me, today is a glorious day. Amen. I stand in celebration of my mother. I know that she was tired. And for many of us, I grieve just like the rest of you. I know she was ready to go home. And I can take solace in that fact. All of us is going to leave here one day. And I pray and I ask the rest of the family that if you intend on seeing her one day, I submit that you get your house in order. Amen. Amen. And when that glorious day comes in your life, mm -hmm. that you'll be ready. The scripture for today we found in Psalms 23. One of our favorite Psalms, and that's why I chose it. I wrestled all night long with a lot of different scriptures, but I came back home to this scripture. Mm -hmm. The book of Psalms 23. And it reads as follows. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness mm -hmm. for his name's sake. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, yeah, yeah. I will fear no evil, uh -huh. for thou art with me. Yes. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Mm -hmm. Thou anointest my head with oil. Mm -hmm. My cup runneth over. Mm -hmm. surely, surely. surely. I said surely. surely. Goodness mm -hmm. and mercy yes. shall follow me all the days of my all life. Right. All right, on this right. Mm -hmm. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. Forever mm -hmm. and forever. Mm -hmm. May God bless you. May God keep you. It's my prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
We will now have acknowledgments by Mrs. Darlene Jones. Following that, we will read the obituary silently. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Darlene Jones. I am the daughter-in-law of Miss Beatrice Porter. I have acknowledgments, but if there are any other acknowledgments in the room, will you please come forward with those at this time? I would like to say that my, my mother-in-law we had many talks. And there's something special about a mother-in-law that you can go to them and talk with her. <coughs> we had many talks. We had so many talks that my husband, Andre Sr., Andre Jr., and her grandson, Damon, would just walk out of the room. <laughs> she would tell me stories that from a long time past, from, from Alabama to up into this day. She would also tell me about her play activities that she had and that she enjoyed so much. But before we, before we concluded, there was never a time that we didn't talk about the Bible. Mm -hmm. We talked about the scriptures and in her own way, she would ask me, well, what do you think about that? And I would say, this is what I think. So she would give me a scripture, and then she would say, no, this is what it means. And then she would back up another scripture with that scripture. So I, I, I thank God that she had a personal relationship with God. And I, I thank God for the relationship that I can call her mother. But now the cards, this card is from Lewis and Sally Starr. And this is with deepest sympathy. I have acknowledgments from the St. Stephen Baptist Church, it reads as follows. May God who sees your grieving heart and hear each tender prayer be ever near to give you peace and keep you in his care. We the members of St. Stephen Baptist Church send our heartfelt condolences as you remember and celebrate the life of Miss Beatrice Jones Porter. To Sister Judy Martin, may you find strength in knowing that your St. Stephen Baptist Church family is here for you, and you are in our thoughts and prayers. Be encouraged, family, through the Word of God, as it is written in Psalms 27 and 14. Wait on the Lord. Well, well, well. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Respectfully submitted by the St. Stephen Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby, Senior Pastor, Yvonne Robert, Roberts, Church Clerk. At this time, I send you greetings from the Indiana Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Senior Pastor Philip Allen, you have our heartfelt, heartfelt sympathy to the Jones family. Put your hands in the hands of the Lord. First Samuel Missionary Baptist Church, 619 South 16th Street. Reverend Leroy Holt, Senior Pastor, 
August the 24th, 2020, <coughs> Beatrice Porter. Sister Porter joined First Samuel Baptist Church by Christian Experience on November the 11th, 1995. Sister Porter was a reverent woman who loved the Lord. Amen. She loved her family with a gentle yet stern combination which only she possessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the behalf of the Reverend Leroy Holt Sr. and the members of the First Samuel Baptist Church, we extend our heartfelt condolences to the family. May you find peace and comfort in the days ahead. And remember that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord done by the order of First Samuel Baptist Church, Reverend Leroy Holt, Senior Pastor, Sister Sally, Star Secretary. Amen. 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 distancing and our time that you limit it to two minutes. Is there one? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is David Jones. We got it going on. Most of y'all call me Sean. Some people call her Sister Porter. Some of us call her Granny B. Most of us simply call her Granny. When I was born in 1980, Granny was already 53 years old. You know, they don't make grannies like that anymore. 1928 is when she was born. Born in times when most of us would have made it. When a black person was being, when it was being, when being a black person was difficult. Mm -hmm. She made it. 92 years old. What a blessing that was. Yes. Granny was the strongest woman I knew besides my mother. She was a rock. Yeah. Now she was the family bowler. Yeah. <laughs> I have many memories of Granny. Too many to talk about right now, but I'll say this. Her and Reverend Porter always made sure we was in church. <laughs> Reverend Porter would pick us up in that big old Buick. <laughs> we was in church for Sunday morning service, yes, sir. afternoon service, uh -huh. and dinner. 
Come on, somebody. Choir rehearsal. Uh huh. Yeah. Bible study. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Wednesday night revival. Keep going. Mm. And our service. <laughs> we were there. <laughs> Granny never turned her back on none of us, right or wrong. She never had a problem with correcting you either. But I still love you. That's how she was. Though Granny is gone. I never forget her voice. Her spirit will always be with us, looking over us, like she always has. All her children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren, family and friends, praying for us. Granny is in heaven with family. Mama up there cooking. Sandra playing spades. <laughs> Reverend Paul is still preaching. <laughs> and Terry and Granny eating the barbecue that Mama's grilling. <laughs> We all love you, Granny, to the end and back. The rest in heaven, Granny. Amen. Amen. I really don't know who I am. I'm his cousin. She probably was y'all granny, y'all great grandmama, or whatever. But she was my auntie. I'm y'all. I'm like. I'm y'all cousin. I'm y'all kin mm. I need to get to know y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm y'all cousin Rob. I'm the cousin, really, of my people is on the Alabama and them side. That's why I came today. I want to get to know my people. Amen. Because he told me, though, about this today, he went on with the work, but I decided to come. Mm -hmm. For I can get to know who my family is. Mm -hmm. For I can get to know who y'all is. Mm -hmm. When this is over with, I want to get to know everybody in her. Amen. Amen. scripture, Romans 15 and verse 13, which simply says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. I just remember so much reflecting upon Miss Porter. And yesterday I was reflecting upon her and the first thing I thought of was her enjoying drinking her coffee. That's the first thing. I remember also as I affectionately began to say Miss B, she said, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I remember sitting on the porch with her and just totally enjoying her company gaining those wisdom nuggets that only a person of her age and experience can give. I, I don't know whether you call her Medea, a mother, or nanny, mama, or, 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 or all. I do know that you call her granny. Mm -hmm. And I borrowed these words, I think, for, uh, for granny. And as I could see this picture of her in my mind, I see this 
poem that sometimes comes to mind for me and that is familiar and it says family is where life begins and love never ends mm -hmm. the author of that poem is unknown but that reminded me totally of miss b mm -hmm. she is just a wonderful person and as you guys have already said she loved the scripture mm -hmm. Uh, family, generation to generation, mama, granny, grand, Miss B, her love will live on inside of you. And this love, believe me, will never end. She lives in your hearts, in the stories, and in the smiles that you share, and the things that you think of, and even in her correction of you, she lives there. As Romans 15, 13 says, so that you may overflow with hope by the power and the aid of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I first met Miss B when Reverend Porter was my patient. Mm -hmm. And she and I would laugh and talk and, and we'd talk about life and just so many, many things. And then I later learned that I went to school with Andre and that... Sandra and I went to the same church. And so I can imagine her soft voice, her sweet personality, her strength, her servanthood, and her watching her stories. <laughs> I remember how she loved to sing, and that one favorite scripture that I remember of hers, Psalm 121. I will lift mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Yes, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. <clears throat> and so thinking of her, like I said yesterday, I thought about this song. And it's a song by Bill Withers from 1971. You guys may be familiar with it. But if you remember it, just can I clap with me just a minute. Okay. Grandma's hands. Mm -hmm. Grandma's hands. Clapped in church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hands played a tambourine so well. Grandma's hands used to issue out some warning. She'd say, Boy, you don't run too fast. Might fall on a piece of grass. Might be snakes in that grass. Grandma's hands. To the local unwed mothers, grandma's hands always there when so well. Grandma's hands always understood. And so, as I leave you today, I want to leave you knowing that grandma's hands, mm -hmm. even though they're not present with you, they will definitely live on in your heart. And God will f go with you. God will follow you. He reminds us through David that weeping may endure for a night. But guess what? Joy comes in the morning. And if you know Miss B like I know Miss B, she's saying to you right now, prepare yourself. Prepare your heart. Receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And one day again, you'll get to see what? Grandma's hands. All right. All Amen. Right. Amen. 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 We now call for our congregationals. Him.
the church say amen again. Amen. amen. How great thou art. To Reverend Bernie, mm -hmm. my fellow clergy in the faith, my uncle Andre, mm -hmm. my aunt Tara, and my mother Judy. Mm -hmm. Members of the family, friends, and guests. It is said that a eulogy is a collection of works or words that when put together is intended to be and give an account of one's life once lived. It's intended to acknowledge one's accomplishments or to make it plain, intended to give high praise. Mm -hmm. And this afternoon, I would like to join the rest of my family in giving high praise. Today we say goodbye. Today we say goodbye to the youngest child of Andy and Cora Jones, All right. their beloved daughter. Yeah. Beatrice Porter was known by many in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Over time, some may have known her to be a colleague, a friend, mm -hmm. a confidant, well. and even a first lady. Well, well, yeah. mm -hmm. But more affectionately, she was known as Aunt B. Mm -hmm. She was a cousin, yes. a sister, well. and a wife. Well, well. And for a particular few, mm -hmm. she was known as Mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I simply knew her as Granny. That's right. Mm -hmm. And like many other proverbial grannies, she had faith. Mm -hmm. She had a faith that was beyond understanding, yes. a faith that the Apostle Paul once called an unfeigned faith, mm -hmm. a sincere faith. Mm -hmm. I know this because she shared that same faith with me. Mm -hmm. And like many of you, as my eldest cousin said, we grew up in the church. And admittedly so, I am a bit of a church boy, and I blame that on Granny. I remember growing up and attending Philippian, which is right around the corner on 17th and Magazine Street, where the Honorable Reverend Jesse Porter served as the pastor, and, and my Granny served just about everywhere else. I remember my mother and my aunts would wake us up early on Sunday mornings, drag myself and my brother to church. Mm -hmm. We would meet our cousins who were woken up early as well. And when arriving, we were greeted with the same three things. It was a smile, a treat, and a threat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In church, I knew I wanted to stand clear of the death stare that was in Granny's arsenal. Wow. And that firm hand of righteousness mm. that was to follow. Mm. So I would sit and eat my little mint as slowly as I could because to me I felt like Reverend Porter had preached mm. two whole sermons every <laughs> single Sunday. <laughs> but then after the benediction was given and the meal was had and fellowship had come to an end, we would prepare ourselves to go yet again to another church service. Mm -hmm. We would go to that second church for the day and come across and be greeted with those same three things, a smile, mm -hmm. a treat, and a threat. Right. And at the time, I didn't know what was going on, but I could tell something was being stirred up. Mm -hmm. I'd always equated granny with church, religion, and faith. 
So since we all grew up in church, and, and since I'm a bit of a church boy myself, allow me just a point of privilege, if you would, to open up your word of the Lord, if you have it with you, mm -hmm. or open up your app, and turn with me to the New Testament book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, beginning with the first chapter, starting at the fifth verse. And these words were left on record. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift which is in thee by putting on my hands. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, Hallelujah. but of power, yes. and of love, yes. and of a sound mind. If you would for a moment, walk with me and journey with me as we explore the subject or the theme, how is your ministry doing? Mm -hmm. How is your ministry doing? doing. Well. While living in New York back in 2007, I had accepted my calling to the ministry. And although I felt I was a babe in the faith, it was it was something I was very much looking forward to, to sharing with my granny. All right. Because as a result of me sharing with granny, our relationship just grew that much deeper based on this common faith walk. Mm -hmm. As the time passed and our conversations grew more frequent and richer, one thing became abundantly clear that every time I would speak with her, she would ask me the same question, and that was, how is your ministry? Within this simple yet powerful question, I found I feared disappointing granny, potentially not living up to the expectations that were established that were so lofty. Mm -hmm. But no matter the response, she always said, continue to study to show thyself approved. Yes. And this familiar passage comes from the same epistle written by Paul that is part of our text today. Mm -hmm. Here we find Paul is in prison in Rome and he is the great missionary. And he writes to his young preacher, Timothy, who is an attempt to encourage Timothy and to affirm Timothy in his gifts as Timothy deals with a number of situations, difficulties, and rude church folk. Mm. Paul knew that Timothy himself was the right man for the job. He knew that Timothy was prepared for this very moment. Mm -hmm. But Paul also knew that Timothy himself was a church boy. He knew that Timothy had gifts and that they were given to him by God. All, right. All Timothy needed was to be reminded and to allow those gifts to be stirred up. Stirred up. Yeah. Yeah. And although we do not know much about Timothy's grandmother, Lois, mm -hmm. we know enough. Mm -hmm. We know that she was faithful. Mm -hmm. We know that the object of her faith was made available to Timothy. We also know that the gifts that Timothy possessed were the result of a praying grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. Granny had this same sincere faith in her God. Mm -hmm. Not only did she have faith in God, but she believed that each of us had a place in the kingdom of God. Yeah, yeah. She also believed that each of us have and has a ministry to tend to while here on earth. Uh -huh. Although not everyone has the same ministry, your ministry may be that of hospitality or that of teaching or preaching or even the ministry of leadership. Yeah. Whatever your ministry is, you can use that ministry to honor Brandon. I know we are grieving, family. I know that we have lost our beloved sister. But there is something that we all can do in the midst of this pain and suffering. And that is to honor her legacy. 
We can honor her legacy by ensuring that your ministry is made up of the right stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the right stuff? Come on. Well, Uncle Andre, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Very quickly, if you just walk with me and I'll take my seat, I promise I will not be before you too much longer. But Paul gives us these three characteristics right here in our text. Right. The very first characteristic that he uh, that your ministry should have is that of power and not fear. See, power comes from that which is mighty. Yeah. It comes from that which is strong and in the possession of authority. Yeah, yeah. There is a certainty that you have when you are standing on sure footedness. Mm -hmm. There is a certainty that you have when you are resting upon a powerful foundation. Yeah. This is why Jesus shared with his disciples that wise men built their house upon a solid rock. Yes, yes. The first time I came back home to visit after I accepted my call in the ministry, mm -hmm. Granny gave me something that I still cherish to this day. She gave me a solid rock mm -hmm. upon which I could build my own ministry. All right. It was a Bible mm -hmm. that she gave me. Mm -hmm. And not just any old Bible, but it was a Bible that was used by her late great husband, Reverend Porter. All mm -hmm. right. Amen. It was a sense of passing of the mantle. And when I preached my initial sermon, I had this Bible with me. And I had this Bible with me because I knew that I wanted to have a strong, powerful foundation yeah. mm -hmm. to allow me to stand boldly and declare God's word with power and not fear. Right. In my opinion, I don't think Granny was joking around. In fact, like I know she knew what she was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She knew that I, along with each of you, would need a strong foundation mm -hmm. upon which to build on. Mm -hmm. She knew that without a solid rock in place, fear could and would set in. Mm -hmm. So the first characteristic is power. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a ministry that honors the legacy of my granny, uh -huh. you must have the spirit of power and not fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I asked, how is your ministry mm -hmm. doing? Amen. Secondly, if you want to honor the memory of granny, I will suggest that you ensure that your ministry has love. Mm -hmm. Love ought to be a characteristic of your ministry. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus tells us that love is the greatest mm -hmm. commandment in the law. Yeah. It matter of fact is the preeminent virtue of the Christian life. And Granny knew how to love and love unconditionally. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Although it may not seem that way today, but I like to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially when the food is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whenever you found yourself at the intersection of Granny's love uh -huh. and her particular skill set around cooking, uh -huh. I am convinced you have found yourself as close to heaven on earth on. that you will come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Granny used to make a very special cake from time to time. Amen. Don't ask me the flavor. Don't ask me for a recipe. I ain't got it. All I know is that it was yellow on the inside and caramel on the outside. But what made this cake particularly special was not the cake itself, but the love that was poured into the cake. See, back then, Granny was a type. She didn't go to Piggly Wiggly or to 28th and Broadway where the Winn-Dixie used to be uh -huh. to pick up a jar of pre-made caramel icing by Betty Crocker. Oh no, not my granny. Right. She would have it no other way but to make that thing herself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And she would make the caramel icing by hand. And for those that know a little bit about cast iron skillets, mm -hmm. you know that it takes work. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know that it takes a lot of work to get that thing just right. Mm -hmm. The time and attention to detail required to ensure that you didn't burn the caramel uh -huh. was nothing short of her love. Yeah. I would watch Granny hunched over mm -hmm. as she stood at the counter over the stove slowly, continuously 
stirring whatever goodness and mercy mm. was placed in right. that cast iron skillet. Mm -hmm. She would stir it up uh -huh. until that thing was to her liking. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that is how she was with everyone else. Hallelujah. Hunch over your life. Yes. Yes. Try her best to continuously mm -hmm. stir up mm -hmm. whatsoever mercy and goodness laid within each of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. She would put in the time until you was just right. Mm -hmm. She would pay attention to the details mm -hmm. until we were just right. With what little she had, she was willing to give of herself mm -hmm. until we were just right. Mm -hmm. Granny's love for each of us felt transcendent at times and was like God himself had made his face uh -huh. to shine upon us. Mm -hmm. So the second characteristic is that of love. If, if you want to have a ministry that honors Granny's legacy, then it must include the spirit of a power and that of love. Yeah, yeah. So I ask, how is your ministry doing? Mm -hmm. Lastly, if you want to honor the memory of Granny, mm -hmm. I will suggest that you ensure that your ministry is of sound mind. All right, all right. A sound mind ought to be a characteristic of your ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. During Paul's first missionary journey, he had founded a number of churches in Southern Gal Galatia and shared with them the concept called the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. And in this text, Paul is sharing with Timothy one of the nine fruits. And that is the fruit of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. This is known as a fruit of self-control or as an old preacher will call it, that of temperance. Paul teaches us that one is not able to possess any fruit of the Spirit while being void of the Holy Spirit. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want the fruit of the Spirit to grow in us, we must join our lives to His. We must know Him, love Him, remember Him, and imitate Him. Which Him am I referring to? I'm talking about Mary's baby, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the Lion of Judah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the bright and morning star, All right. the one that they called Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. If you are here and you don't know him for yourself mm -hmm. and are not saved, today would be a good day to commit yourself to his work. Yeah. For there is no other choice that would make this, there is no other choice you would make that is more important than this one that would determine your eternal rest in place. Mm -hmm. And that would determine on whether or not you will see Granny again. Mm -hmm. For no one knows the day nor the hour when God will call you to be with him. Yeah, yeah. And what better way to jumpstart your ministry than by accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Yes, sir. Although we are sad, we know that the absence, we know that to be absent from the body mm -hmm. is to be present with the Lord. Yes. For those that know him for ourselves, mm -hmm. we all have sweet, blessed assurance. Thank you, Lord. We know that soon and very soon, we are going to see the king mm -hmm. and our beloved sisters and brothers that have gone on before us. Mm -hmm. Mourning is natural indeed, but mm -hmm. let not your hearts be troubled because yeah. granny has earned the right mm -hmm. to that sweet, sweet rest yeah. that is just beyond the river. Mm -hmm. And she has earned it because her ministry well. was of sound mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to have a ministry that honors the legacy of Granny, uh -huh. then your ministry ought to include the spirit of power and not fear, mm -hmm. the spirit of love, and lastly, the spirit of a sound mind. So I ask you again, how is your ministry doing? Mm -hmm. As I prepare to take my seat, 
I am reminded of a time when Granny was just 41 years of young. Mm -hmm. Well, preacher, how is that so? You weren't even born by that time. Well, I've done the research and I've looked up the testaments and the texts. And mm -hmm. when going back, I found that in February of 1968, there was a young man by the name of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. that gave a sermon entitled, The Drum Major Instinct. Mm -hmm. Unknowing to him, this was to be his last sermon he would ever preach. Some of you may be familiar with the sermon because it was very striking as a sermon. It was very odd and peculiar because it was one that was considered to be unorthodox given the time and the climate of the day. Yeah, yeah. A young preacher from the South stood before a congregation and shared with them his thoughts around what he liked someone to say on the day where his very own eulogy was to be given. All right. He declared that on that day, he liked someone to mention that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to live serving others. Uh -huh. He declared that day that he would like someone to say and mention that he tried to love somebody. Mm -hmm. He declared on that day, he'd like someone to mention that he tried to feed the hungry and mm -hmm. tried to clothe those that were naked. Mm -hmm. He declared that on that day, he'd like someone to mention that he tried to visit those that were in prison. Yeah, yeah. He declared that on that day, he'd like someone to mention that he tried to love and serve humanity. Uh -huh. Well, as we arrive at this day, the day that we collectively eulogize Beatrice Porter, mm -hmm. let it be said that Beatrice Porter did not simply try but she did. Yeah. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Let it be said that she spent a lifetime having served others. Let it be said that she had spent a lifetime loving on others. Let it be said that she had spent a lifetime feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, uh -huh. and providing shelter to the homeless. Let it be said that she did in fact visit those that were imprisoned spiritually yeah. because she was a soldier. Uh -huh. She was a soldier in the army of the Lord. Right. And on the battlefield of life, uh -huh. her faith ensured that she looked mm -hmm. to the hills. Yeah. She knew to look towards the hills because oh, yeah. that's where her help would come from. Yeah. She right. knew her help would come from the Lord. Yeah. And her unfeigned faith was indeed her ministry. And her ministry was powerful and without fear. And her ministry was loving to the end. And uh -huh. her ministry was of sound mind due to her relationship with the Lord of yeah. hosts. Yeah. Right. And it is the same Lord that said unto her, mm -hmm. him, her, come unto me. Yeah. All ye that labor yeah. and are heavy laden, mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. Yeah. Surely, yeah. her Lord said to her, on, well man. done. My good and faithful servant. And if she was here, she would say, I will never leave you uh -huh. nor forsake thee. Uh -huh. She will remind us of the words of Jesus when he said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh -huh. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. In my father's house are many mansions. Uh -huh. If it were not so, I would have told you. All I right. go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive Receive mm -hmm. you unto myself, that where I am, uh -huh. there ye may be also. Mm -hmm. If she was here today, right. she'd remind us that there, that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew uh -huh. their strength. Uh -huh. Granny, there is no doubt that we know you are in heaven, uh -huh. in that mansion that you spoke of, uh -huh. singing the everlasting praises of your God. Yeah. And we know that your soul is happy. Yeah. Beatrice Porter, you have yeah. fought the good fight. Yeah. You have ran the race. Right. You have finished your course. Yeah. And you have kept the faith. Uh -huh. My charge to each of you today uh -huh. is to hold on to oh, the yeah. memories of Beatrice Porter uh -huh. by honoring your ministry. Mm -hmm. So today I ask you, in the same question as you asked me, how is your ministry? How is your ministry? How is your ministry?
Amen. Amen. How is your ministry doing? Amen. Our interment will be at Green Meadows Cemetery. Those that are joining the family, there is not going to be a repast, but the family does have instructions for uh, one another. And I just want to say, Judy, Andre, Tara, thank you so much. I'm honored to be here and to celebrate my friend. Amen. For those, the benefit of those that are here now, I want to just give a slight benediction. Scripture. Found in Ephesians 3, verse 20, which simply says, Now unto him that is able yes, to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask, think, or even imagine, according to the power that worketh within us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. As a chaplain, I say to those friends of this family and to the family, in 30 days, check on one another. In 60 days, call and check on each other. When you see one another at the Kroger's or, or, or wherever you see one another, give each other a hug. Call out Granny's name and remember a story to keep you from this day forward. We'll turn it now to the hands instructions.
Crossbow stepping down. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thank you. I thank you. <laughs>